Hello, we're continuing our reviews on the Universal Frankenstein series with 1944's House of Frankenstein. Now, House of Frankenstein is a direct sequel to Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, making this the sixth film of Universal's Frankenstein series and the third film of the Wolfman series. It is also the fourth film of Universal's Dracula series, because this movie features the character of Count Dracula, who was originally created by Bram Stoker for his novel of the same name. However, Dracula's role in this movie is really more of a side story, so this is the first of what I guess you could call Universal's Monster Mash series. So what do you guys think of House of Frankenstein? Jeremy, you first. I think it's uh, pretty good. Uh, you know, it's got some good things going for it. It's not perfect, but overall I think it's a pretty fun watch. What do you think of House? It's a fair average sequel. Not the best, but it's okay. I like it a lot more than Ghost of Frankenstein. All right. You see, like, I used to love this when I was a little kid. I rewatched it again a few years ago, and when I, when I rewatched it again, it did not hold up very well for me, but rewatching it again for this review, I gained a little bit more of a pr an appreciation of it. It's definitely a weak film, but I still enjoy the film. It's not a bad film by any means. Now, the plot of House of Frankenstein is it's essentially two stories in one. One story focusing on Dracula, and the other story focusing on the Frankenstein monster and the Wolfman. But the overall plot focuses on a mad scientist named Nemon. Now, Nemon has been locked up after doing experiments very similar to the experiments that Frankenstein did, and it turns out that he completely idolizes Frankenstein, and he's been locked away with a hunchback named Daniel, who has become his assistant. Eventually, they escape from prison after a disgustingly convenient storm busts a hole in their cells, giving them an escape route. After escaping from prison, they come across a traveling horror show, and they kill the owner and take it over. And it turns out that this horror show actually had the body of Count Dracula. Now, you could debate whether this is actually in continuity with the other Universal Dracula films. But Nemon, he actually brings Dracula back to life and forces him to work for him for a brief period. And this part of the movie acts as sort of a story within the story where you start following Dracula as he goes after a young woman. And I won't give away too much about what happens in this storyline, but, but Dracula doesn't end up joining Nemon and Daniel for the rest of the movie. Eventually, Nemon and Daniel get to the town that Frankenstein meets the Wolfman took place in, and they bring the Wolfman and the Frankenstein monster back to life. Of course, Lawrence Talbot is pissed at them for returning him to this miserable life where he has to live as a werewolf. But Nemon tells him that he could use Frankenstein's notes to try and cure him, so Talbot reluctantly agrees to help him. And throughout the film, Nemon is trying to get revenge on the people who sent him to jail. And that's the basic plotline of House of Frankenstein. In the movie, Boris Karloff plays Dr. Nemon, who is the main villain of the film. Now, Karloff, of course, played the Frankenstein monster in the first three films of this series, so this is really him returning to the series, but as a different character. J. Carol Nash plays Nemon's hunched-backed assistant, Daniel, who is clearly based on the character of Fritz from the first movie and the character of Igor from Son and Ghost of Frankenstein. However, this character is far more sympathetic than either of those characters. Now, J. Carol Nash also played the villain in the original 1943 Batman serial. And he would actually go on to play Dr. Frankenstein in 1971's Dracula vs. Frankenstein, which is unconnected to the Universal series. In the film, Lon Chaney Jr. reprises his role as Lawrence Talbot and the Wolfman. John Carradine replaces Bela Lugosi as Dracula in the film, and he would go on to play Dracula in the next film, which was titled House of Dracula, and he would play Dracula in 1966's Billy the Kid vs. Dracula, and in 1969's Lost Vampires, and again in 1979's Nocturna, Granddaughter of Dracula. None of these films are connected to the Universal series. 
Now, John Carradine was also the father of actors David Carradine, Robert Carradine, and Keith Carradine. In the film, Glenn Strange plays the Frankenstein monster, and he would go on to play the character in the rest of the series. Elena Verduca, if I'm saying her name right, plays the gypsy girl that Daniel falls in love with. And Gwen plays the character of Rita, who Dracula goes after in the parts of this movie that actually deal with Dracula. Now, Gwen is actually the grandmother of actor Chris Pine. Lionel Atwell has a small role in the movie. At this point, he was pretty much a regular in this series. However, he never played the same character in any of these movies. What do you guys think of the acting and the characters in House of Frankenstein? Oh, I think it works very well, especially from Boris Karloff, who I just love. One of the things he was able to do is his he was able to make his voice at one point very soft and soothing and sympathetic, like, for example, when he's talking to Lawrence Talbot and saying, Yes, I, I too am a doctor. I can help you. But then later when he's talking to one of the jurors that convicted him, you know, he's like, I'm going to give that brain of yours a new home inside the skull of the Frankenstein monster. You know, he was able to change it like a light switch, you know. At one point, sweet and sympathetic, at another point, dark, snide, and sinister. What do you think of Boris in the movie? I can probably be a, I mean, it's a little, somewhat, a little bit of a jerk at times because he really did not care about helping da Daniel or Lawrence. So all he cared about was getting the monster back. And the one character who I really couldn't stand only because of what she says to Daniel was the gypsy girl. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's just like what she said to him was like really freaking harsh. Yeah. You're ugly, and I hate you. I found her very shallow. Yeah. yeah, so did I. Yeah, she wasn't a very likable character. Yeah, I, mean, the, I mean, she was sympathetic because of the abuse yeah, she was suffering true. at uh, with the other gypsies, but still, what I feel like the movie should have had was maybe a scene where after that outburst that Daniel, she apologizes. Yeah. Something to humanize her a little bit, but in general, yeah, she was a real bitch in this movie. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. I will say Daniel in this film, I think, is an extremely sympathetic character. Yeah. yeah. I would say he's probably the most compelling character in the film, besides, yeah, like, Lawrence Talbot. But what do you think of John Carradine as Dracula in this movie? And more so, what do you think of the fact that Dracula's role in this movie is really more of a side story? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I liked John Carradine as Dracula. So but, did I. But yeah. Bela will always be uh, my Dracula. You know? Me too. I wish they could have gotten him to do the role for this. There is one rather creepy scene with Dracula in the movie when he's sort of seducing uh, the character of Rita, and he's apparently showing her visions of hell. That's actually a pretty creepy scene where she's yeah. describing seeing into hell and stuff. Yeah, I can only imagine what that would have looked like had they shown it. You know, she yeah. says, I see all these dead people who are still so somehow living, you know. Yeah. That's not been good to see. Cre creepy. So what do you guys think of Glenn Strange as the monster? I think he does a good job. You know, he was actually coached by Karloff on how the monster, you know, should walk, you know, move around. So I think that was a very nice touch. Anyway, he, he passed the torch to Glenn Strange that you're the new monster, and he was alright. Yeah. If you think about it, throughout the entire series, in each film, he's just basically like... Laying down on that, that table, waiting to be operated. Yeah, that's something I'm not particularly fond of yeah. this movie or the next one. They reduce the monster's role to really just almost a cameo, I would argue. Yeah. That's, that's actually a complaint I would have, too, is I don't think this movie... This movie's banking itself on the fact that it has these three great monsters in the same movie. Yeah. It doesn't really do much with any of them. I would say, like, the Wolfman probably has the best arc in the film. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, followed by Dracula in second, and then by the monster. It's such a disrespect to the character. It's like, you just have him lying down there for most of the movie. It's like, that's nothing. Yeah, but what do you think of the movie overall? Like, besides the acting and the characters, how do you feel the story works overall? It's okay. I mean, I think I still enjoy it. You yeah. Know, I think it yeah. nicely follows the continuity from Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. For the most part, yeah. I would say it's a deeply flawed film, but... Enjoyable. Now, there was actually a 1997 miniseries called House of Frankenstein, which I guess was sort of a loose remake of this. I remember seeing parts of it. Have you ever seen it? I think I saw bits and pieces of it a long time ago. You know. Yeah. Have you ever I, seen that one? Never even seen or heard of it till now. Yeah. I, I, I remember seeing parts of it, and I thought it was okay, but once again, I would have to watch the whole movie and stuff. Who's in it? I don't even remember who's okay. in it. So yeah, that was our review of House of Frankenstein. Stay tuned for our next review, which will be House of Dracula.